I first started with CNC in about 2002, and it was actually uh, half mechanical and half manual machine. Uh, the x-axis was me mechanical, and the uh, y and z you did by hand. And then we upgraded that machine to a full CNC machine by adding the extra motors and changed the uh, drive system. And that was in about 2006. Uh, my CNC machine is a legacy. It's uh, 27 by 72 inch capacity. Uh, I can turn up to 11 inches. The, I also have a laser engraver, uh, 12 by 24, and lots of saws, sanders. I have a full wood working shop. Uh, we spent a lot of years remodeling houses, building cabinets, and that sort of thing. So I have everything that it takes to build everything that's inside of a house, <laughs> including the house. <laughs> Primarily, I use Aspire. Uh, the only time I use anything other than Aspire is for the laser engraver, I use Corel to do the printing function. Everything is laid out in Aspire and has been since about 2007. It's uh, easy to learn relative to a lot of other software. The Probably the, the thing that I like the, um, the most about it is the automation. The, the snap to things like that that make it very, very easy to draw things. Flipping over about a line, tools that most software don't have. It's much more accurate. It, if you want to make, a, say, like a, a, a seven-sided object, you can do an array. You, you draw one little piece of it, you flip it over the line to make the other half, then you do an array and you have the completed object. And you can do that so quick. Guidelines, that's probably the primary thing, uh, especially now that you can rotate them to any angle. It makes it much easier to position and draw things. Uh, you can snap a vector line on top of the guideline and it, it's at a perfect angle. That's probably the number one thing that I use the most for layout is the guidelines. That's a hard question because there's, there's really a couple of them. The videos are excellent. That's a really good tool for learning and, re and refreshing your memory on things that uh, you've forgotten. But the, the, probably the, the best one is Vectric staff. Emails, it, it doesn't matter how you correspond, there's always somebody that responds back really quickly. And that has been uh, something that, that has been done as long as I've been using the software which is quite a number of years now. This is the parts for a Whirligig, which in this case is shaped like a, a leaf or flowers. And one of the problems that people have had with Whirligigs is that when you have a high wind, they tend to fall apart. So I came up with a way to put these things together so that that doesn't happen. And by gluing the shaft onto the leaf and inserting it into a slot, uh, you eliminate the problem of the things ejecting and flying out or the stem breaking off, which is a, another common problem with a lot of the whirly gigs. If you live in an area where you have a high wind like we do in uh, central Washington, the high speed can make these things fly off. I had one that uh, had dowels stuck in a hole and I found some of the pieces more than 100 feet away. So this one was made uh, from Baltic birch plywood. It was all laid out in a spire. It has stainless steel bearings in it, flanged bearings, which makes it turn really easy. It's mounted on a stainless steel shaft so that it doesn't corrode. And the pivot is just a hole that's lubricated with a high pressure wax 
so that it turns easily in the wind, but it just sits on there. And it has withstood winds as high as 70 miles an hour without coming apart. To color this one, I used aniline dye. And the advantage of dye is that you can make them look more realistic than you can with paint. And after the dye dried, I sprayed it with a clear lacquer. These are intended for outdoors in uh, a climate that changes temperature and can be very hot in the summer and quite cold in the wintertime. It's, it is dry, we don't have a lot of rain or snow, but I put a lacquer finish anyway because it's more durable.